talk about this series without getting demonetized challenge. Uh... But lovers, welcome back to Camp or Cringe, Lore's edgier cousin, where we discuss whether a young adult dramedy is camp or cringe or both or neither. This is the first time I'm covering a show not made by MTV, so you're safe for today, mangy tit virgin. A what? Expect a lot more insults like that. How come we're always sniping everyone's jokes? What? As we cover Paramount's one season and 10 episode reimagining of Heathers from 2018. It's supposed to show how much has changed since the original in the 80s, but instead they dropped us in this fully imaginary world. A world where Kurt and Ram are oppressed because they can't be racist? Is that right? We're going to break it down episode by episode. This series has a very morbid sense of humor if you could even call it humor, but I'm gonna try and censor it as much as I can. But just know it's a lot. Viewer discretion is advised. Calm down, Veronica. It's only high school. It doesn't mean anything. Right off the bat, this show is shot really well. The cinematography and visual choices, for the most part, are killer. Killer, I hardly know her. Speaking of which, the opening shot is JD's mom setting their house on fire and then unaliving herself in front of her child's son. You might have a mom, she might have a bomb. The choice to have her wear a red skirt Scrunchy really threw me off. I thought that was Heather Chandler's mom or something. I'm sure we'll see it again. We see Veronica talking to her guidance counselor who essentially says you have to be a minority to get into college? From the very start, the dialogue felt like it was trying way too hard to be edgy. Veronica comes to the conclusion that she's nothing. Aww. Aww. For whatever reason, right away I didn't empathize with her. And my weird vibes detector did not fail me with that one, but shut up for a second. We are introduced to the Heathers in a cafeteria shot. They're strutting in, they're turning heads, they're shutting people down. Being the cold-hearted bitches we expect them to be. But the twisty twist is, she fights for social justice in a way that makes Makes her look like a villain. So she holds power over the school through their fear of being cancelled. Oh, she isn't wrong about the stance she's taking, but it's clear she only cares about these things for online validation and followers. And worse than that, she fights bigotry with with sexual harassment? Uh? What fucking universe are we in that she wouldn't get canceled too? Literally, this is a plot point. Oh, you wore a racist t-shirt? You're gonna repay for your sins by asking that girl in front of everyone if you can <laughs> her a Huh? What? <laughs> the next part is a bit nitpicky, but this is the first time we're seeing the Heathers, and they didn't lean into the iconic colors. They're just doing it through accents. Everything else about this is very in your face, but, th but they wanna be cute and subtle with this? The colors that everyone associates with the series, it pissed me off. We are then introduced to a traumatized teen JD who's just Riverdale's Jughead, but instead of saying he's a weirdo, he just lists a bunch of races and sexualities he isn't, stating he doesn't fit in any of the boxes on a college application. But he could have just gotten the point across by saying, I'm weird, I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in and I don't wanna fit in. And Veronica's like, I got something else you can fit in. Ayo, up top. No, but seriously, as he's giving this Joker monologue, she's just staring at him and biting her lip. Okay, Debbie Ryan, pack it up. We have this line, which I'm not gonna say, but I'll let them take it away. No girls in the girls' restroom. Also, I can't help but think back to the original Heathers and compare. And in this world they set up, it does not make any sense that the Heathers are friends with Veronica. In the original, they keep her around because she helps them out and then they notice that she's pretty. In this version, there's no origin story. And it is established that 2018 Heathers only likes hanging out with LGBT people, but they hang out with Veronica who admittedly checks off none of their boxes. Is she their social media manager? How does she benefit them? How far am I supposed to suspend my disbelief? You gotta give me something. Veronica and Heather Chandler got into a big fight at the art show and Veronica accidentally spilt art on Heather. And how does Veronica stick up for herself after saying that Heather's an asshole? Well, naturally she says, Lick it up, fatty, lick it up. Bro, what? Heather Chandler didn't even bring up weight. This wasn't even like a fighting fire with fire that came out of nowhere. That's not just a normal response people keep in their back pocket. And the writers casually dropped that line so casually like, uh, I was just saying what we're all thinking. I assure you no one was thinking that. If you wanted to do a then lick it up, literally, Heather said something about her wearing a pussy outfit because she was dressed like a cat. I don't know. 
You could have done something with that. So Heather Chandler announces that she is now hell-bent on ruining Veronica's life. And I fully support it. JD and Veronica's genius plan to get back at Heather is to plant a hate symbol onto her. Because, oh yeah, fun side note, JD's dad collects what rhymes with Yahtzee memorabilia. Okay, so they put this hate symbol hat on Heather while she's sleeping, takes a picture of her, and acts like it's a selfie that they're gonna post on her Instagram. Because that looks, this looks really natural. If I saw this on somebody's social media, I think, yeah, that's a fully conscious person who decided to post that. This isn't suspicious at all. When that genius plan doesn't work, because they forgot, oh yeah, she can wake up when we put a hat on her. She can, she can totally just open her eyes and catch us. So just like in the original, they try to kill or accidentally kill Heather Chandler. But this time, it's with a red pill. <laughs> it's a giraffe! Is this because Chandler's color is red, so they're giving her a taste of her own medicine? Or is this a nod to the far, far right group known as Red Pillars? I don't know why they decide to go with this visual choice, but genuinely, these visual choices are the most interesting part of the show by far. Not because it adds any depth, but because you can tell some thought was put into it, unlike the writing. Take a shot every time I compliment the cinematography and shit all over the writing. <laughs> Yeah, just kidding, don't do that. This show is a right-leaning, moderate's wet dream. At first I thought it was written by somebody on the far, far right, especially with an appearance from Ben Shapiro, I mean, Brett Cooper. But I think the whole statement this show is trying to convey is that if you go far left enough, it becomes just as bad as the far right. You see them criticizing really far right, upper crust, wealthy assholes in the form of Veronica's parents who are essentially just iPad kids and also casually very racist. But their version of dunking on the left is being like, oh, did you see her at that fracking protest? What a pretentious bitch. Dude, that's not the zinger you think it is. Somebody getting worked up about something they should be worked up about? I don't get it, so I'm just gonna laugh. <laughs> Betty gives Heather's eulogy because she ran to the mic the quickest. <laughs> We will decide who gives Heather's eulogy based on who runs the fastest. After all, Heather did care about race. Episode one ends with the reveal that Heather Chandler is alive after her dad Heimlicked her by like karate chopping her in the back two times. They found her in the morning, which means she wasn't breathing all night. How is she alive? I don't even know why I'm giving this a second of my time because there's so much else to unpack. And after seeing how many likes her fake sewer slide video got, she decides she's going to commit. No, she's not taking a one-way ticket to Unalivesville, but she just wants people to continue thinking she did. She's alive. So this is something I didn't mention in the pilot, but the opening sequence shows a variety of scenery shots and then a black light appears, uncovering something really sinister. And what we see before every episode changes, as a nod to what we've seen in the previous episode. This is one of the few things I wanted to give credit, but in one of the episodes they had a derogatory word appear after the black light comes on, so we literally can't have nice things. It's so obvious they were going for a, oh my gosh, I can't believe they went there, but instead I was just like, Bro. This episode starts with JD criticizing people for pretending to care about the latest tragedy, for validation, or to feel better about themselves. But this is rich coming from JD because he keeps saying he can't feel anything. So my guy, are you sure you're just not projecting your thoughts onto these people? How do you know they don't actually care? JD stands for judgy douche. Betty, childhood friend of Veronica and notorious track star is briefly running shit at Westerberg High. And we start to see that Heather Chandler, though her approach was very unorthodox, was actually successful in reigning in racists. And now that she's gone, these stereotypical jocks are just doing a weird offensive chant. They were just dying to be who they really are and who they are is terrible. There is not one likable character, but shut up for a second. Veronica and Betty tragic backstory time. What's their trauma? You wanna know what their trauma is? Yes, they discovered one of their friends was killed. Oh, that wasn't fun at all. Why is she smiling? Look, there's nothing behind her eyes. I think this show broke her. With all of these tragedies seemingly haunting the people of this small town, it could have been compelling. It could have been like Star Kids Hatchet Field. But you know what gives Heather's 2018 a disservice other than everything about it? It's the fact that it's a retelling. The Velma Riverdale treatment. It's the perfect way to put it because it's not fleshed out. And then they have moments like this that have a semblance of originality, but then they have to force it to be confined in this unoriginal premise. 
Heather McNamara's whole thing is that she's being ostracized over pretending to be a lesbian, and she's also slut-shamed for sleeping with a teacher. And I put sleeping in air quotes because that power dynamic, everyone's saying she's enabling pedophilia to the point where the teacher pretends to be the real victim. And it's clear that even the writers know how fucked up this joke is. So they're trying to wink, wink, nudge, nudge us into laughing at their uncomfortable and quite frankly, unfunny joke. Hey guys, if it's a joke, then where's the funny? I'm gonna trust that you know what you're talking about and that this is funny. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look around for the comedy, okay? Comedy, comedy. Take this, you might need it. Oh, comedy, comedy. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> You know what was actually funny though, and it kills me to give this show credit, but Heather Chandler making her grand entrance back into society, rising from the dead dressed in all white, roller skating to Beyonce's halo, as all of her classmates look on in absolute shock, horror, and amazement. It's funny as fuck, I'm sorry. I can't pretend it's not. That genuinely got a laugh out of me. But now it's time for gore. I don't do well with gore. I do well with lore. <laughs> Bars! But anyway, Heather McNamara offs herself in the most brutal way possible. It was really just a cry for help. She was bleeding from her hands, staining everywhere she went red. So the blood is on everyone's hands. It's honestly a really horrific scene. It made me feel queasy. I feel very bad for her. She was probably the most normal character and then she was shit on from every angle and killed off episode two we're only up to the second episode who cares veronica is haunted by guilt she envisions heather mcnamara's spirit working in a jewelry store called deep regret heather begins lecturing veronica about how she should send more young people her way because it gets lonely here is veronica just dying to kill again and finding any way to justify it now that i think about it in that childhood flashback betty screamed when they found her friend but veronica looked more like she got caught you know i've been watching this show too long when jd actually starts to make sense he said Heather M's funeral had nothing to do with her, and people only showed up to calm their conscience and prove to everyone how much they really cared. When it's obvious, no one did. And Veronica is pissed about him saying this. Why? Because she's more like the rest of the school than she thought. The entire funeral, she was like, wah, why didn't JD show up? He's not a good boyfriend to me. She made the entire funeral about herself. It was all about her relationship doubts, not the person that just died. The original Veronica was likable because it truly felt like she was sucked into this fucked up world and she actually had good intentions and didn't know who to turn to. But I feel absolutely nothing towards this Veronica other than annoyance. Also, pass the tissues, please. Heather Chandler's mom doesn't believe in her? Oh. Wow. That's tragic. Definitely the most fucked up backstory we've seen in this show. It really makes you think about absolutely nothing. Heather is overshadowed at the audition by Lizzie, a foster care kid Heather Chandler took under her wing to make her look better, but instead it made her look worse at the audition, which she very much cares about. So that pretty much sealed Lizzie's fate. But you know what made this scene hilarious? The very obvious unsubtle pitch correcting. It gave a similar vibe to those spontaneous singing TikToks. I'm ready to know what the no. Asking some questions and get some answers. Where's this other what voice coming from? Wait, what, it, who's singing that? Burn? Oh my god. Heather Chandler is making Heather Duke break up with Kurt, even though they don't want to. How does this benefit her? Uh, it doesn't. It's just more plot, so this can be 10 episodes long. But if I really forced logic onto this, Heather Duke did keep this a secret from Heather Chandler, so Heather Chandler might have taken that as their loyalty slipping. Ram and Veronica went out on a date, and JD killed Ram in a jealous rage. Veronica was like, oh my god! You really do love me. And this is the start of their whole Bonnie and Clyde thing. So this obviously differs from the original. In this version, Ram was really nice and respectful to Veronica out on their date and was killed merely because JD and Veronica are bloodthirsty demons. Whereas in the original, Kurt and Ram were very predatory towards Veronica. JD was like, not on my watch, not on my watch. That's the love of my life and killed them. And Veronica was very freaked out by this. Evil Veronica be like, they didn't make me cry but they still have to die. Oh my God, 
That's the song I was just singing, from The Real Heathers. JD gave Veronica his mom's red scrunchie. I knew it would make another appearance. They get up out of the snow, but instead of it looking like angels, it looks like an outline from a crime scene. Also, holy shit, this is like a blinking you'll miss it moment. I just realized this while editing. They're like on a stage, nodding to the performative nature of everything these two pretentious murderous fucks do. I kind of love that. I sound like a broken record, but visually this show is fascinating. Veronica agreed to hang out with Betty, but then blew her off. After all, blue is her favorite color. Come on now. What was she doing instead? Swooning over JD's reckless driving and the fact that he's an atheist. Our love is somebody I don't believe in. Brianna Parker, played by Brett Cooper, tries to take her own life. That's not very pro-life of you. Betty started suspecting Veronica was up to no good and tried to warn JD. Terrible decision making on Betty's part. JD then tries to kill Betty. Betty then beats the shit out of him and Veronica was his getaway driver. But because he kissed Betty as a way to avoid suspicion from a jogger and Veronica saw this, she feels betrayed. She is seething with rage. I can excuse murdering my friends, but I draw the line at cheating. This is where we get to see probably the only interesting storytelling choice. While Heather gets validation through followers, Veronica is a parallel to her. But the only difference is Veronica only needs one follower, JD. And he let her down, which is why she crashed the car with both of them inside. The bitch is crazy. We see this episode through JD's eyes, so we see his angsty doodles, his furious texts, and what he hears in the hallway. Before this regular day at school, we see how the police interrogation went. And since Betty did too good of a job defending herself, no one believes her. JD's all beat up and she's clearly hysterical and angry. Her own parents took JD's side in front of the police. So once again, they've shown how backwards this town is. And it's working out a little too well because I'm just mad. I don't like angry watching fictional shit. If I wanted to be mad, I would just watch the news. We get a first person drug trip from the sketchy dentist who helps JD escape from reality. Freeze your brain, Novocaine. Oh my gosh, while he was tripping balls, he saw red scrunchy mom and she said, pulling on my dick, like the original Heather Chandler. Gasp, is she supposed to be the original Heather Chandler? from the 80s, but if she didn't die, that's literally so s stupid. I hate it. JD then successfully pinned bringing a weapon into school on Lizzie. Remember Lizzie, she upstaged Heather Chandler, so Heather Chandler made JD do that so that she can be the lead in the musical. Who gives a shit? Even after all that, he still believes Heather Chandler is blackmailing him with the footage of him and Veronica breaking and entering into her house. You know, when they tried to kill her? So naturally, he tries to kill her again. This is how we get to this truly badass fight scene. She tries to fry him in a tanning bed, and when that doesn't work, she creates a hairspray flamethrower Heather Chandler, use flamethrower! But the best part is when he gets his head stuck in a dollhouse. Because remember, we're seeing all of this through his eyes. Look at this shot! Broken record shit, but it's so good it's almost tricking me into thinking this show isn't a pile of shit. This is the shiniest, sparkliest turd I've ever seen in my life! End of the episode reveals Veronica did kill her friend. I called that. I knew it. And JD is figuring out how deep her hatred of everyone goes through reading her journal that she left next to the bomb he planted. She blew up his car and for once she's not wearing blue, she's wearing red. I can't imagine this scaring him away, however. He's probably like, wow, she's even more amazing than I ever could have dreamed. Oh, what a smoke show. Like my car that she lit on fire. Honestly, honestly, I like this characterization of Veronica. Like if you're going to throw the whole original premise out the window anyway, you might as well make her the real villain. At least that's a little interesting. In fact, I hate that I'm even entertaining this, but this reveal inspired me to write a little silly song. Allow this to be the intermission as we are officially halfway through the series. My musical theater ass just cannot help myself. And I've always wanted to sing a villain number, okay? Sue me! Dear Diary, I'm not wrapped up in some weird game. I write the rules, I'm not the same as the tainted hero you would like. I say I'm nothing but my rap is mine and maybe the world doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I'm worth all the trouble.
surprise me about this show anymore, but I'm really supposed to give a shit about this high school hierarchy and the school musical and Heather Duke's new school news show when this psychological thriller is playing out between Veronica and JD. I know I can never actually make it up to you. But that's why I'm here, JD. But I don't deserve you, Veronica. The one interesting thing that happened between the Heathers is when Heather Duke successfully dethroned Heather Chandler, Heather Chandler reacted by trying to run them over. Actually, not trying, successfully running them over. She ran over her own friend. Here's an embarrassing fun fact. Sometimes I get Mean Girls and Heathers confused. I mean, Mean Girls really is just kids boppified Heathers. That sentence alone is gonna piss off a lot of people, but prepare to be more mad. So when I saw this scene of Heather Chandler running over Heather Duke, I really thought for a split second, oh, that's like the scene in the original Heathers when Regina George got run over. Wait, Regina George, that's not, Jesus Christ. Back on topic, so I was right about the whole JD loving Veronica more because of how fucked up she is thing. The episode ended with her pretending to unalive herself, but then when she heard him monologuing about how much he really loves her, she dropped the act and was pretty much like, I knew it! And he was like, holy shit! He actually did say, oh damn, which made me laugh. <laughs> And then they started doing it. Oh boy, here I go killing again. Now that Heather Chandler knows what it's like to feel ostracized, she came to the realization that she's not a good person? Gasp. But okay, actual plot twist? Is that Jeremy Colhane, my favorite TikToker? What are you doing here? Brett Cooper's storyline, who gives a shit? I'm skipping it, I don't care. Veronica and JD killed that pedo teacher who's continuing to prey on kids. She even writes a note to make it look like he confessed to being the croquet killer. But... But wait, that's a lie. She did that. I know she's murdered people, but now she's lying? Tch, this is a new low. And we see through Veronica's monologue in the beginning and how this episode wrapped up with animated birds that this is truly her fairy tale ending. But Dexter, she is not. Teachers accidentally killed the board of directors during firearm training. A very on the nose argument against the whole good guy with a gun solution. If they just stopped at the opening, I would have been like, haha, decent joke. But of course, they do a whole episode of JD getting a step by step tutorial from an active shooter drill. Very, very unfun fact they had to keep putting off releasing this episode because the timing just kept being insensitive. Because this shit happens too many times to really joke about it, in all honesty. And on ongoing joke is that the stoner girl is the voice of reason, but no one listens to her. Okay, I want to try not to be super cynical, but I feel like true camp, you know, over the top silly shit comes from authenticity. And this show very much struggles with that because its stance on almost everything is all over the place. This is the first time you can tell this show is making a joke because it too is depressed at the current state of ongoing violence. Thank God, it would be really weird if they took any other stance, you know what I mean? But even still, the jokes don't land. The two remaining Heathers are friends again, and then they read Veronica's diary, find out she's a killer, and this is where the best line of the show happens. You were confessing to a murder, and you just, like, carried the murder evidence at school? You dumbass. The Heathers are at first disturbed, but then came around to, damn bitch, we knew we kept you around for some reason. Guys, they're best friends forever. Aww. Till they all go to hell. Aww. The only other thing in this episode worth mentioning is that we got a real motive behind Heather Chandler breaking up Heather Duke and Kurt. She's never been in a relationship and she's bitter. We learned a bit more about her insecurities in this moment. It's a shame they do nothing with it. It's almost over, like I give a shit. JD killed Kurt. In the arms of an angel. Jeez, what number is the kill count up to now? Later in this episode, Heather Duke found out JD killed their boyfriend based on the way he used myriad in a sentence, just like how he did in Kurt's sewer slide note. A car chase sequence ensues and they were so close to getting away, but then the driver crashed and they ran straight into a barbed wire fence right on their neck. Ah, it was so gross. And then Heather Duke spit blood on JD's face and said, quote, tell your mother to spit out the devil's bleep before you tongue kiss her in hell. The only final words that make sense for this character. The acting was genuinely great and I actually am gonna miss them. It's all downhill from here. The show got a lot duller after this character was gone. This is the only death in the whole show that truly moved Veronica for like a whole minute, which is a new record. Veronica tells off her boyfriend for killing her friend. Bad. Bad, JD. I told you we're done killing people. Veronica also scolds Heather Chandler for still wanting to go to prom. The episode ends with JD, Veronica, and Heather all going their separate ways. That shit is a, a two-pack of ass. They are all next-level rich. Heather Chandler, JD, and Veronica all take separate limos to prom. Guys, they can't be the same limo. The lighting's different. Also, 
Wait, Veronica, why are you going to prom? Didn't you just end your only friendship over this? Further evidence that Veronica has no clue what hill to die on, she just wants to die. Veronica sees JD go down to the boiler, where he shares his plan to blow up the school to send a message to the world. What's that message? Uh, I don't know. That he's angry and violent? I at first, Veronica hates this idea and runs upstairs to warn people, but ends up listening to the last Heather's monologue about how she's better than everyone else. She reveals that she doesn't care what happens after high school because she knows she'll be a part of every single one of her classmates' lives forever. Every time they think back to Westerberg, they will think of Heather Chandler, really rubbing her power in Veronica's face. And guess what? Veronica proves her point by sitting there listening to her monologue when she knows the school's about to blow up. Girl, run! So Heather's I'm better than you speech makes Veronica completely 180. Now she wants to kill everyone. And JD 180 would because he wants to save this assacre. A massacre of asses. It sounds like something the show would come up with, but believe it or not, I came up with it. He wants to save it for a different day because the news is already covering a similar tragedy elsewhere. It's not funny. It's just sad. Now Veronica and JD are fighting because JD wants to disarm the explosives while Veronica wants to keep it going. Who is watching the entire time? My favorite TikToker. Dude, why are you here? Both to the character, run, save yourself, and also to the actor, don't be in the show. Run, save yourself. JD and Veronica shoot each other and die holding hands. And then everyone dies except for Heather Chandler and the teachers. It's so unsatisfying that the group of teachers didn't also die. Because other than JD, Veronica, and that one teacher they already killed, this group of teachers are the biggest villains. They hated these kids. After they all died, they went out for drinks. And the way it's written is supposed to be a joke. Where's the funny? The only good thing about this ending is that everyone's in heaven, which is just another prom, which actually seems more like hell. And they're all happy, except for Veronica and JD. No one can see them and they can't see each other. This is their hell. They deserve every second of it. I think that's the first time I smiled watching the series, is seeing these two get tortured. And it's hilarious that these two are so downright evil that the rest are just good by comparison. I'm not even mad. Heather Duke and Heather McNamara could have been redeemed if they weren't killed. They were just shitty in a normal high school way. But JD and Veronica, you just sit there and reflect forever. The ending then teased Heather's Revolution, which was supposed to be their concept for a season two. A season two? You killed all the characters! Who would Heather Chandler even interact with? It got cancelled. Obviously. Even if it didn't, what were they thinking of doing? This is bothering me now. Let me search this up. According to Reddit user Wind Kirby, they thought it would be a kind of modern, edgy retelling of the French Revolution, with Heather Duke playing Marie Antoinette, and much of the cast playing the new roles as well. I'm guessing it would have been a period piece, but with plenty of I don't know what that word means. I'm so sorry, sweetie. Basically a cross between Heather season one and Marie Antoinette. Somebody else says, that's an interesting concept. I like the idea of an anthology series kind of like American Horror Story. It truly would have been a horror story. Me personally, I'm glad it's over. So is it camp or cringe? It's neither. It's pure pain. I didn't even get this mad about finding Carter. This takes the cake. Oh, let them eat cake. Like, like the season two that never happened. I've never seen a show where I hate every character as much as I do here. And it isn't even necessarily because they're bad people. It's mostly because of the writing. Take a show like Metalocalypse. None of these guys are good people. They are responsible for many deaths. And yet, I still kind of love them. I haven't watched enough of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but I've heard that's also a similar vibe. It's possible to have us follow flawed or just straight up evil people, but the watchability all comes down to execution, and this just simply was not enjoyable. I don't know who this show is for. The ratings were not even as low as I thought. There were some glowing reviews. Who are these people? This show had a lack of focus in everything besides visuals. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the rest of the December uploads. My upload schedule is out now on my community tab. Let me know which one you're most excited for. It's gonna be a freaking doozy. And if you enjoyed, please be sure to subscribe. See you in the next one, butt lovers. Bye.